What's up guys, welcome back. Now in this video we're going to be talking about Red Dead Redemption 2. My impressions of the game on the PS4 Pro and what I think of it compared to other open world games such as Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero Dawn and also high caliber, high rated games such as God of War and where it stands in comparison to those games. And a disclaimer before we get started, this is an impression video of about 8 hours into the game. But I have experienced a lot of the gameplay mechanics and some of the things that I have issue with are definitely not going to change because of how the game plays. And I also want to make clear that I think this is a very good game. I think it's a great game actually. It's of extreme high quality, some of the highest production values I've ever seen in a video game. Without a doubt this is most likely Rockstar's best game they've ever made. And if you are a Rockstar fan, no doubt you would like this, and it is fun to play. I want to make that very clear. However, I also want to point out that it is 2018 and not 2013 when Grand Theft Auto V came out. It's been five years, and there's been quite a lot of improvements in gameplay mechanics and open world games over the years. So I am taking that into consideration with this impressions video of this game. So for me, the excuse of, hey, this is how all Rockstar games are, I don't buy that excuse because other developers have in fact changed gameplay mechanics to update them, to improve them. No doubt this game has done some of that as well, but there are a lot of things that are holding it back that we will discuss. So take all that into consideration and let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice about this game, Red Dead Redemption 2, is that the game looks absolutely gorgeous. It has some really good graphics, some of the best graphics you've probably ever seen in a video game. But we'll get to that later. I don't think it is the best graphics of all time, as some people have been saying, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But first of all, we're going to get into the most important part of this game, and that is the gameplay mechanics and how it works, how it feels, and my impressions of it. Now, keep in mind, I've played a lot of open world adventure games over the years. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, and also, of course, character-based action games such as God of War, Bayonetta 1 and 2, and Uncharted 4. So granted, some of those games like Uncharted 4, for example, are not open-world type of games, but with the way games have been made over the last, you know, four, five, six years, the way gameplay in open-world games has balanced, knowing that it is a video game overall versus realism has been a key factor in how games play on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch over the past few years. And you can include Assassin's Creed in that mix as well with open-world games and improving upon the mechanics of them, making things more seamless, less cumbersome, less time wasting. Lots of improvements have been made. So when I played Red Dead Redemption 2, I expected as a gamer in 2018 that these quality of life improvements would be in this game from Rockstar since it was so highly rated. In fact, it has one of the highest ratings of all time already in Metacritic for the Xbox One X version of the game with a 98 out of 100. So. People think extremely highly of this game. Many people are calling it the game of the generation for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So for this game to be so highly regarded, in my opinion, it definitely needs to have some of these quality of life improvements in the game itself, in your gameplay. And unfortunately, the gameplay mechanics are lacking a lot of these quality of life improvements that have been made over the years. When you play the game, obviously you will know that Rockstar is going for extreme realism here in how the character moves, how your horse moves, and the way you do things in the gameplay experience of it. However, a lot of these things are simply just wasting your time in terms of how you're playing the game because there's a lot of things to do in this game and a lot of these things are simply just drawn out a lot longer than what they should be for the type of game that it is. And the game still runs on the Rage Engine which was used in Grand Theft Auto 4 back in 2008 for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. And it was used, I believe, on Rockstar's Table Tennis a few years before that as well. So the Grand Theft Auto engine that they're using for this game is 10 years old already. Obviously, it's not the same one they use for Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City and things like that. But this is a very old engine, and this is most likely why the game feels very much like an old Grand Theft Auto game without the latest and greatest improvements from these new open world experiences. Now, Rockstar fans, I know you guys out there are probably right at home. You feel right at home with this game because it feels just like all the old Rockstar games as well. But for someone like me, and I've also seen some other people as well online say this, when you come in to play this game for the first time, it feels sluggish slow and even unresponsive in comparison to a game like Horizon Zero Dawn, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, games like that that are very responsive, control very tightly, you can move very quickly if you need to and slowly if you need to as well. There's a balance there and in this game a lot of the time you're simply walking at a very slow snail's pace 
especially in the beginning portion of the game. The game drags on quite a bit. It has a lot of long, drawn-out scenes that you're forced to walk through in real-time gameplay, and your character is forced in walking mode. You can't run. And I understand why, of course, because the game is trying to teach you how to play as you go, which is a good mechanic. However, some of these things are simply just way too long drawn out, and they could have been tightened up quite a bit better in order for you to get more into the open world experience a lot quicker. Have all the freedom that you would like to have that you get a few hours later in the game. And keeping in mind that this is an action game, I do think the gun mechanics and the way you dodge and interact with the level, I think that could have been greatly improved in this game. I do think it feels clunky in comparison to other games. Your character feels very stiff, you're going from a walking animation to a running animation. There's no like jogging and pushing up on the analog stick doesn't do anything really but make you walk. I would like to have some type of in-between speed range like a jog or you know a half run that you could do with the analog stick. But since you only are limited to walking, it does make it feel kind of out of place when you're going from walking to running, walking to running, walking to running a lot in this game. Overall movement in this game just doesn't feel as tight as other open world games to be honest with you. And the gunplay does work overall, you know, it feels pretty good when you're shooting guys and everything. And you can aim just fine with the right analog stick, so no problem there. But I did have to increase the sensitivity up quite a bit for the aiming and then camera speed because it felt extremely slow when I first played the game. So I had to up that almost to the maximum level to get the full responsiveness of the game. So I do suggest you do that if you're used to having games be more responsive. I do suggest you up the sensitivity level on this game quite a bit for that. And again, a lot of these things are simply annoying things about the gameplay. None of it is game breaking, but a lot of it is simply just annoying when you compare it to other games in this genre. So another thing that seems very unnecessary in this game is the looting aspect of the game when you go over and pick up the items from a dead enemy. Basically, in my opinion, I think that that animation they have is too long and drawn out. It takes too long to go and loot someone, especially since in this game, it doesn't give you an option to choose what you're looting. You simply take what the person has and that's it. So your character goes through the same animation each and every time. And in my opinion, I think it's unnecessary. If you're just getting items with no choice, you should just be able to walk over to them and simply just press the X button or whatever button they want. Just tap it and pick up whatever items you want from them. As a simple button press, since you don't have any choice anyway of what you're getting from the character, you might as well just be able to pick it up just by standing over them, in my opinion. I think it's just a time waster. And compared to other games like Horizon Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild. Here's a comparison of the three games so you can see the issue I have with what I feel is an unneeded animation for the looting aspect of Red Dead Redemption 2. Take a look. So you can see there that in Horizon Zero Dawn, you have the option of choosing which items you want to take from a dead enemy, or you could take all of them at the same time. But the difference was is that you could also do so in an extremely fast way. It didn't waste your time with going through the same animation over and over again. You simply bend down and take your item and leave. And Red Dead Redemption 2, it is that same drawn out animation each and every time. Then of course you had the very simple example with Breath of the Wild, another very big open world game, where you simply just go and pick up the items by walking over them. So it is a huge difference and time saver when you have so many things to do in this big open world, that going through that each and every time when you go to loot an enemy, does become boring pretty quickly and feels like a waste of time. And another thing that annoyed me quite a bit 
already in this game are some of the missions are completely a waste of time in general just com a complete waste of time there's a mission that you take that when you leave your snow town basically in the beginning of the game and you're leaving to go out into the city into your first camp area the mission that you go on with your wagon is an extremely annoying mission in my opinion and obviously situations will vary for other people you may not have this experience yourself but for me i thought this was very annoying and this is supposed to be an open world game so i thought you would have freedom to go wherever you want maybe take different routes you know to your destination but no in this game you have to go the route that they want you to take or you will fail the mission and have to start over again so i'll tell you right now that that is very annoying for an open world game an open world game in my opinion should be something that is you know free form you can go anywhere you want and you can do missions in multiple different ways but this game is very linear in that aspect where it wants you to go in the way it wants you to go only and if you stray off the path even just a little bit you'll fail the mission which you'll see right here now another thing that was very annoying about this mission it takes you about four and a half minutes or so almost five minutes to reach your destination once you fix your wheel on your wagon and you go from that point all the way to the destination you need to reach which is your camp that is nearby the town not too far from there and like i said before if you stray off the path obviously the mission will be failed but also what i found out unfortunately which is kind of funny looking back on it but also frustrating and just shows just how much of a waste of time this is was that I actually went a little bit too fast in my wagon and went over a little bump and the wheel broke right before I got to my destination and I failed the mission because of that and that was really frustrating because the game puts you back all the way to the beginning of where you started you gotta do all that over again going through all the dialogue seemingly for no reason because the game puts you in a situation right after that where you're going to the town and you're doing the, basically the same thing again but, and you're in no danger, there's nothing wrong. So obviously the game was trying to teach you how to use the wagon in that instance but since it didn't let you go in all directions and was very limited, you're basically just going along for a real time cutscene that you could actually fail. Which seemed ridiculous because when I was playing the game I wanted to enjoy, you know, trying to explore and going all around, seeing what the wagon could do and all those kind of things. I didn't realize it would be so limited so that was really disappointing. And then only to find out after that, that you would go on another ride on that same wagon, just down the hill a little bit to the town. And the game could have taught you how to drive the wagon on that aspect and just kept it as a cutscene on that time before that on your way to your camp. So I thought that was just a really bad design choice and I wasn't expecting it. Obviously there was no real quote unquote gameplay in there, it wasn't hard or anything, but if you're trying to explore the area because you think you can't because it's an open world game, you really have to listen to what the game says to a T or else you will simply just fail the mission. Or you have to remind yourself that hey you know this isn't really a video game after all, they're trying to emulate real life so your wagon could break on a dime and you gotta start all over again. So you gotta keep those things in mind when you're playing this game. However, there's also unrealistic things about how this game works as well, reminding you that this is a video game and another example of this is a looting system like we touched upon before but this is in regard to how it's affected from a real-time cutscene so in this game it does not allow you to continue to loot things if you're in a real-time cutscene I was in a room talking to a lady and the conversation was going and the game allowed me to control my character and run around the room however I was not allowed to loot the boxes inside the room during the conversation with the female NPC. The game allowed me to run around and everything, but I was not allowed to actually loot any of the cupboards or things in the wall. Only after I was done with the conversation did the game allow me to loot those areas. So that was another time waster. So when you're in those real-time conversations, you would like to be able to continue your gameplay. If the game is allowing you to interact with the world and allowing you to run around like it did, you would think that you should be able to continue to interact and loot things while you're in those conversations because it saves you time. Again, this game is a time waster. There's all, all kinds of things to do in it. There's tons and tons of missions to do. Things like that simply are a waste of time. And then there's the whole parkour aspect of this game and how you move and interact with walls and how you interact with barriers in front of you. This game obligates you to press a button every time you want to hurdle over something. And that is another thing I feel that is a little bit limiting in this game in, in compared to other games like Assassin's Creed and Breath of the Wild, for example. Those games will automatically parkour those areas for you and they'll simply, you know, jump over automatically. Certain things like low fences, for example, or small things on the ground they'll jump over but in this game 
you actually have to press a button in order to jump over them. For example, if you're running at full speed towards a low fence, the game will not automatically jump over it for you. Like a lot of other games, it's programmed to know that obviously you want to jump over those things in that aspect. But in this game, you have to press a button no matter what. Unless it's just a tiny little small like a branch on the ground, your character will actually just walk over that. But on anything else, you do have to actually press a button to quote unquote parkour it or go over it. So that can add to the feel of sluggishness and how the game controls. And the longer you play it, obviously we'll get used to it pressing a button, but it would be nice as a quality of life type of maneuver in order for the game to just do it for you automatically. And finally and lastly, we'll get to the graphics of the game. The game looks absolutely beautiful, it has some of the best looking graphics I've ever seen as far as the game worlds are concerned. I think they did an excellent job. There's physically based rendering all over the place. There's all kinds of ambient inclusion, all kinds of effects going on, on the screen. The lighting is just beautiful. It's a gorgeous looking game. The one thing though that the game lacks a bit in quality, in my opinion, is the character models themselves their animations, and some of the facial animations as well. They don't look as convincing as other games, such as God of War, for example, or as detailed even. Some of the NPC characters simply don't look good at all, in my opinion, and I'll show you an example here. We'll go back to that room I was talking about where I couldn't interact with things while I was in that real-time cutscene. NPCs like that pop up from time to time. They don't look very good. There's some bad textures here and there that you'll come across in rooms like that. Like I said, in some of these cutscenes they use in this game, the characters don't display emotion as good as they did in a game like God of War. And the overall detail I do think is superior in God of War than it is in Red Dead Redemption 2. However, it is very close, I will admit. Red Dead Redemption 2 does look extremely good, but in my opinion, I'm gonna give the nod to God of War in the graphics department. Obviously, for a gamer, there's no you know right or wrong answer here because they're both different games. But let's go ahead and do a comparison and you guys can decide for yourself. Great. Go check the horses already. <sighs> you gonna take the old man into town? You can take us too? Well, what you got planned? Nothing. We'll find something for y'all to do. We always do. We're bored out of our minds. Been cooped up here for two weeks now. Karen's about ready to murder Grimshaw. <laughs> well, can Miss Grimshaw spare you? <sighs> can Miss Grimshaw spare you? What's happened to you, Arthur? Three young, healthy women want you to take mm -hmm. them a robin. You're worried about house chores. Let's go. Fair enough. You got me. Come on in. <laughs> I can't believe we're going to see civilization. Feels like weeks since we did. Yeah, Valentine. <laughs> Very embodiment of civilization. <laughs> Ladies are going to love it. Okay, then. Let's go. Gentlemen, I think I got something good. What? What? I snuck into this fancy house. Acted like a servant girl. Usually works. Someone was saying her sister was taking a trip from New York or someplace. Train full of rich tourists heading to San Denis and then cruising off to Brazil. Okay. A train laden with baggage and passing through a bit of deserted country at night as to get to the docks in time for the tides in some place called Scarlet Meadows. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, yeah, it's right out near New Hanover. <laughs> right, it's real quiet out there. Sounds good. Uh, Where's Tilly and Karen? I think at the hotel. They were picking up some drunken fellas that they was gonna rob. Why? It seemed easy. They have been gone for quite a while. I guess I'll go see if there's any trouble. Oh, there's Tilly over there. That does not look ideal. Excuse me. Get your hands off me. We didn't know he belonged to anyone. He doesn't. He's my friend. The boy was following my command. Then help fix this. Hold here, please. Hold, I said. He's losing blood. The last of his kind in all the realm and you shoot him. You needed food? Target practice. Target practice? I'm... I'm so, so sorry. Keep that pressure on. The blame is mine. I should have kept a closer eye. Will he die? I will not let him. You. The arrow cut a tideway inside him. Find both ends and hold them tightly. Below it. Hemelay! Look! It's all right. Is 
Is he friendly? Boy. I promise you, he's safe. When they find you, and they will, they'll make things difficult. The boy will want answers. That will be my problem. Whatever you're hiding, you cannot protect him forever. But you're right. Doesn't concern me. I also need lamb's crest. Do you mind? It's a white petal flower in my garden. Just a handful. Fine. Lamb's crest. Alright guys, I hope you've enjoyed this analysis video of Red Dead Redemption 2 in comparison between other games, and I want to make clear that I don't hate the game at all, I think it's a great game, I think it's very good, but I just wanted to point out some reasons why I do think that there's quite a bit of annoying things about this game that hold it back in my opinion from being called the game of the generation. However, if that is your opinion, I definitely respect that guys. But feel free to leave a comment explaining why you think that possibly I'm wrong about this. You guys can discuss it there. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.